Yo, yo, it's your girl Cash Page. I'm chilling with real life street stars right now. It don't get no better in the city, man. It don't get no better in the world. We going crazy. Subscribe to that channel right now for more talent and more success. Swag. <laughs> Real life street star, start clapping right, motherfucker. A, a young legend in the building. Cash Page, what's going on with it? Man, what's popping? How are you? They want me to fall <laughs> off so bad. Why they want you to fall off so bad? Man, I feel like everybody can relate. I feel like we all got them certain people that want us to not succeed. Yeah, fuck them. Sure. Man, we gonna get right into it, man. For everybody, yeah, no, it's ain't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right for everybody ain't knowing deaf dumb stupid living up under a rock man tell them where you from man i am from grand prairie texas you know what i'm saying i went to timberview high school i'm 21 years old and shit we in the dfw right now where we at and we in the motherfucking deep do you feel like people put respect on grand prairie as they should um no nah, i feel like not a lot of people know about grand prairie for sure damn damn what do you feel grand prairie could do because it's right you know if, if if the world doesn't know there's Dallas, there's Fort Worth, but also in between there is Grand Prairie, Arlington, Mansfield, Mansfield, and a lot of people have come up through Grand Prairie. Mm -hmm. But it's like uh, I believe um, I, what, Selena Gomez, Selena Gomez, oh, really? um, and there's a lot of other cats that uh, you know, even uh, uh, I think was was, was Sean Cotton uh, Grand Prairie, yeah. or was Arlington. All right, what? Well, yeah, it's, it's all, all in the yeah. same world, all, all, all yeah, in the same world. Me? To where I feel like it, there should be some type of an event center out there to make True. that shit pop. But you know. Uh, I feel like true, and I feel like it will happen eventually. So I have to ask you, in your rise to fame, mm -hmm. did you try to course through Grand Prairie? Or did oh. you start off in Dallas or Fort Worth? Or hmm. what was your stomping grounds when you? I would say I for sure start off recording in Grand Prairie. My dad engineered and produced all my stuff. Oh, um, shit. Shout out to yeah. Dad. <laughs> yeah. He almost got like a young daddy. <laughs> <laughs> was he hard on you like Joe Jackson? Was he? Nah, song, <laughs> my dad was really shy. He just always made, you know, made me believe in myself. Though, I will say that. But he was shy as fuck. Yeah, he, you know, he pursued his dreams throughout me, for real. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I would say started out there, was using YouTube beats, and then I used to sneak to the studio in Dallas. Oh, that's hard. Hell yeah. Man, I feel like, you know, we had the Mo3, Yellow Beezy, Trap Wave, and then it was like a younger wave, and y'all was a part of it. It was like the U, Take K, a, a little loaded like all y'all just popped oh, and it seemed you. like y'all popped in unconventional way y'all didn't really go through the same half pint films and the, you know mm -hmm. like the, the same procedure how were you able to kind of get your rise so quick because you seemed like you took off fast that's what oh. it feels like I feel like possibly just God honestly and just like believing in myself you know what I'm saying I'm not trying to be like religious or nothing like that it's just more so like I just believe in myself and I believe God has a path for everybody and you know, like same with y'all. Y'all got y'all y'all stuff going on. Congratulations to y'all. So it's like, I love, love. yeah, you know, like even me being on the show. Like thank y'all. So did you have a, a a plan set out as far as where you want to be, or were you just using your talent to get to you know one step after the other, one step after the other? I think I was just winging this shit. I was just like, <laughs> I was just like, I was like, shit. I'm just gonna keep making music. I'm put this shit on SoundCloud. Um, ah, oh, what was his name, bro? It's his last name is McGee. They say Shush something, McGee? Shush McGee. Yes. Shush McGee. He was the first person to give me advice and say that I need to take my music, well, keep it on SoundCloud, but use DistroKid. So that's when my music started going like to like YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, all that shit. And he was like, you might not make no money right now, but just like, it's gonna be everywhere. And I was like, all right. So I started using it and then shit like, kind of just started to flow my own way. I had the manager, Rahi Ballantyne at the time. And uh, my aunt, I kind of just randomly fucking found me. Like he said he was arguing with his girlfriend and came across my shit on SoundCloud and he just listened to my whole catalog and reached out. Yeah. Now what song would you say, that's when you knew you fucking had it? Like you, li you listened to the song back and you was like, yeah, I got this shit. Damn. Honestly, probably some mindset of a player on SoundCloud. Like people will say love songs. When I first made love songs, I wasn't even a fan of it. I like played it for my cousin. I only had first verse done in the hook. And then my cousin was like, this shit gonna be a, a 
fucking hit. He got the chills. And I was like, all right, nigga, you high. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm like, this shit cool. But like, I'm like, I'm going to drop this shit like it's everything else and it's not going to do nothing. And when I dropped it, of course, you know, it didn't really move at that time. But also, it's a timing for everything. So I didn't know that was going to be the song that popped me off, though. Isn't sure. it crazy how it's always the songs that you don't even really give a fuck about? How Hell yeah. That would be one everybody <laughs> love. For sure. Now, when you started, you know, coming up and, like, attaining more fame, what was some, a part of the game that you realized? You're like, damn, I didn't realize I was going to have to put up with this. Hmm. Fake people. I think... I think in my mind, it was like, shit, coming straight out of high school and having to deal with people that didn't, like, whenever I wanted love songs on my first project, my label wasn't really feeling it just because it was like, they couldn't get in contact with the producer because the producer was a YouTube beat. And it was kind of just, I feel like it was too much money maybe for my budget. And then I was like, shit, y'all gonna regret saying that shit. Cause I was like, man, this needs to be on the project. Cause around that time it was kind of like getting, you know, a few more plays and shit. And then that shit kind of just popped off. Now, Method Man said recently, uh, he said, uh, whenever you pick your own single mm -hmm. and the label wants to go with another single, but you're so adamant about that single, they say it's probably a rap for that label. I mean, it's, it's a rap for you with that label. Would you say yeah. there's some, it, did you feel like there could be some truth to that based on what you, just what you see in the industry? Uh, no, nah, I feel like shit, everybody just kind of hopped on. It was like shit when it, like niggas didn't really care. It was kind of just like, yeah, we don't really fuck with it. Shit pop off. Oh, this is amazing. Like, oh, oh shit. Song. Oh, she's right. Oh yeah, man. I've been supporting it. <laughs> They're like, oh my gosh, we, we got to take you serious. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like around that time, it's kind of like shit. People don't really give a fuck until it started popping for real. So no, I looked at the numbers right on Spotify. That damn song got like 232 million views or something. Platinum Plaque say? What it say? Say a billion global streams. And so what I was gonna say is, you know, people be having arguments about, man, nobody from the city, da 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 da. But I never see you jump in there and pop your shit. Pop that shit, man! A billion fucking streams. I don't feel like I need to. Why don't you ever feel like you need to? Because I feel like if I'm a star, I'm gonna shine regardless. I don't feel like I gotta let niggas know I'm a star. So do you ever wear? Um, you know how people get on and they wear their city on their back, like they feel like they got to do so much for their city. Do you ever feel like that at any point? Um, of course, I got triple D tattoo on my hand. I think in my mind, it's like, shit, I'm just trying to put the flag in the city. You know what I'm nah, saying? Nah, <laughs> Thank you. For real. Thank you, I appreciate that. Now, 21 years old, mm -hmm. and you got your own mansion. How did, wait, wait, wanna, oh, can we come stay? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's start there. How many rooms can we stay in one? Guest room, goddamn. Yeah. Wait. And, I, and I'm always curious because you know we see a lot. Of, there's a lot of young millionaires in this day and age since the YouTube era. How does it feel to you know not only gross more than your parents, but be able to take care of them immediately at age 21, whether they live with you or in the house? I mean, I don't. I don't know who stay with who, but no, of course I stay by myself. Look at this motherfucker. This yeah. motherfucker. I All right, you gotta make me and my puppy. Me and my puppy. Man, he got I, his own room. I got 10 bathrooms. I could. Sh no, oh, I, got, I got 10 bathrooms. <laughs> no, I, just no, I, I, I know it's, it's all in the square footage. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> it's all in the square footage. How 4, does that 000. feel, though, to just to have that, that to gain that wealth and for your talent to take you to a level to where you can sit back and say, look at this? Um, Grateful. You know what I'm saying? I feel like. Do you have time to take it in? Uh, yeah, but also, I just like, I don't know, I feel like I always dream. So in my mind, I'm like, man, like, I want more and more and more. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's always going to get better, especially when you're a great person. Now, you're young and you are a great person. How many cousins came out the woodworks? That a lot. <laughs> yeah, like, they, they want me to, yeah, like, one of my cousins, bro, like, mind you, we from the suburbs, like, this nigga started rapping about like, yeah, I see my homie get shot. <laughs> nigga gonna DM me, bro. He DM me. He, he DM me, bro. DM me my mama and was like, I need y'all to post this like for real, like show love, this, this, that. And I'm like, bro, who would you see get shot? Well, I'm like, he said, I see my bro get shot. I'm like, nigga, Cameron died? I'm like, lost his I'm like, I'm, I'm like, lost demons. <laughs> Bro, and then he got mad whenever I said I wasn't gonna post. Cause I'm like, you don't live that life. Like, you come from a great, you live with your grandparents. Like, you come from a great home. And I'm he was just demons. like, man, you just don't believe me. It's all good. Like, you Hollywood, you stuck up. I'm just like, nigga. Oh, they, no. oh he hit you with that? Yeah, hit me oh, and my mama shit. with that shit, bro. I had to Damn. get on his ass because he was trying to get my mama ass. But I was just like, bro, like, you're from the suburbs. Like, claim it. You know what I'm saying? I can see if it's a storytelling type thing. Like, if you listen to your homies and they live that life and you're rapping it for them or you're a storyteller, like, you make up stories. Stories, you know what I'm saying? Because that's a form of art as well. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like if you just acting like you a killer, like shit, not it. 
Now, when you look at a city like Dallas Fort Worth, um, some of, who are some of your musical inspirations, not only from the city, but also as you were coming up, you know, you got to kind of follow behind some people, stand on some shoulders. Okay. Who would you throw I would say there? for sure, huge fan of Drake. Um, huge fan of The Weeknd. I was telling like, I love Nirvana, Metallica, um, Vampire Weekend. I'm a huge alternative rock fan. Right. Yeah, you say, so, what was that? Uh, uh, what you, uh, Rolling Stones. Uh. Rolling Stones, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I just feel like alternative music, because I grew up playing Guitar Hero, playing Tony Hawk, and like Def Jam, Fight for New York. So it's like oh, all that nigga. shit kind of mixed in together. <laughs> oh, if they didn't do Def Jam and you they, was in there. They're, they're supposed to. Dead ass? Yeah, they're supposed Ooh. to. It's just hard. Hell yeah. yeah. I don't know what my move going to be. You got to come up with it right <laughs> what now. What do you want it to be? <laughs> Nigga started singing. Good. Nigga. <laughs> for real. For real. But nah, shit. Honestly, they're supposed to. But I think it's different now because it's like back then, I don't think that people really gave a fuck about getting money from, right. you know, like right. now artists is like, you better pay me a million dollars to put my shit in there, you know? Do you feel like black people miss out on a bag not tapping into these different genres? Because you said alternative rock and like mm -hmm. that is a whole space that we do not occupy and it's some of the best music. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it kind of just depends on who that black person is and who that person is in general. Because it's like, shit, it's a lot of people that just don't fuck with that sound. It's a lot of people that do. It's just they haven't been heard yet. So I have to ask you then, um, and I want your take on where you land. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Lotto had a song uh -huh. that, of course, a Grammy was nominated for. Mm -hmm. um, Nicki Minaj had a song mm -hmm. that they moved the category from uh, rap to pop. Mm -hmm. And she really felt that Lotto's song should not have been in the rap category. It should have been in the pop category. Now, with genres and the way they play with music nowadays, because mm -hmm. all these genres mix, what are your thoughts on that when you hear, like, uh, uh, the super freak and a, a, a big uh, big energy? And mm. do you feel like big energy is a pop song or rap song? Um, I feel like Lotto was for sure popping her shit. And I feel <laughs> right, like, right, you know what I'm saying? Right. I feel like at the end of the day, it's kind of like whatever they wanted it to be. You yeah, know that's what I feel like. They just said, yeah. like, we're just going to control it for you. God damn it. Yeah, but also it's just like in my mind, shit, I probably would have been like, damn, I got it. I'm nominated for a Grammy or something. Yeah, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, like, right. I'm like, shit, like, I don't give a fuck what I'm taking home at the point. <laughs> yeah, like, but I get it, of course. It's like, it's kind of like being a rapper and somebody give you a whole another category. I get it, but also it's just like, shit. I don't know. It's kind of just like whatever the fuck you make it and just be grateful. Hell yeah. Would you mind crossing over and being pop? Is that something that Cash Page be trying to do? Hell yeah, already, I got a... <laughs> um, I have pop records in the vault that I'm for sure dropping um, next year. I feel like this album that I'm about to drop this Friday is for sure R&B. Yep. And then it's the last... I wouldn't say it's the last R&B side you're going to hear me, but I got a lot of pop and EDM records. I'm trying to tour the world with Steve Aoki. Yeah, I was going to say, you did just drop a, a trailer. Uh, the, the the name of the album was uh, S2ML? Yeah. Okay. Soundtrack to my life. Soundtrack to uh, One of the things that you was like slanging CDs and <laughs> like some old school Dallas shit. Was that just the Dallas in you, like that, that old pop trunk mm. that made you want to come up with that idea? Kind of, but it was more so like shit. I love the vintage wave. You know right. what I'm saying? I feel like a lot of, we don't have a lot of street teams no more neither. Yes. I feel like yeah. that's a big thing that we need to bring back. Like people po putting flyers and stuff up and kind of just not for a release. It should be for all, all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like motherfuckers just getting your name out there. So I feel like in my mind, it was kind of just, you know, just being able to show like, yeah, you know, we in the streets with it too. Yeah, we still, yeah. See, cause I was the other day and right, right here, I think it was at uh Phil City. Mm -hmm. A nigga actually walked up to me with a CD and it fucked my head up. I'm like, damn, he, he like, yeah, he was like, and I just had to buy it. it mm -hmm. He was charging a lot though, but I had to buy it. How much was he charging? Ten. I'm like, nigga, ten. Yeah, he said, he said, pay him what he worth right no, no. now. Fuck, fuck that. Chick walked up to me. She had her CD and model headshots, both for either one for fifteen or two for twenty five. Nigga, what? And then I said, I ain't got it. She pulled out the little swipe shit. Yeah. For the car. Yeah, hey. Wait, but for model headshots? Hey. Model I see the signed model headshots. Hey. Ah, damn, she said I'm a celebrity. Say, I know. seen I seen a badass chick outside. She was selling a DVD like with a movie and she was in it. <laughs> I was like, Damn. 
I'm like, but but the thing about it's it is, pretty dope, though. if you put it in somebody's like, you getting yourself out there at the end of the day. Facts. Oh yeah, I never heard of somebody selling a the fucking they headshots and shit to yeah, people with autograph. That's like some <laughs> Martin shit. Yeah, like. they, they take it to the next level. So yeah, what can we it. what can we expect from this new album? I, I'm loving that song 24, man. I, I got that Thank on the, on repeat. That's with Lil TJ. If y'all don't, hey, go go download that song right now. I sent it to some people and they fucking with that. Um, Thank you for sharing it. Is that um is that on the album or do we have? Yes, that's okay. on the album. So okay. all the singles I dropped this year are gonna be on the album. It was Girlfriend, um, 24 Hours, Little TJ, and Miss My Dogs featuring Black and Doubted Me. So those yeah. are all gonna be on the project. The project got like 12 songs. Oh, that's what's up. Can you give us just one song for people that are not familiar with Cash Page on this album? Mm -hmm. That like that that one song they should go straight to. It's so hard to even think about it right now. I feel like people are gonna fall in love with the intro. It's called All Girls Cry. All Girls Cry? Yeah. Oh. They gonna oh. fall in love with that bit. <laughs> Definitely. Um the track with uh Lil TJ Man in twenty four hours, um, that was recorded prior to his incident or uh... Um, so we went on tour together last year. I opened up for him. And then shit, the label was like, y'all need a record together. And so I kind of just like sent it over to him and he just like sent it back the next day and they were like, this is out, we're putting this yeah. out. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's how they do it. Hell yeah. So how does it feel when you see a situation like what was going on with him and uh, you as an artist knowing that you have this coming and knowing that you know, you know you're in business together with someone and you see uh, a situation like that, how do you feel as artists? Cause you know, us as fans, you know, we're already, you know, we're rooting and praying, but you actually have direct like, you know, workings with them and how does that feel? Um, it's kind of, I feel like it's scary because it's like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was the first artist to take me on tour, you know? Uh -huh. So uh -huh. it was just like, just wanted to make sure he was good. Of course, he is good. Um, I think it's just more so like just your situational awareness, making sure everything around you is good and, you know, keeping security with you at all times. This is a question I've always asked for like, um, when an artist like such as yourself, right, you build up a certain level of buzz, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to start doing shows. Mm -hmm. What do an what does an artist need to do to get to that point to where they can get out there and, and get these bigger shows versus yeah. just, you know, paying somebody to open up? Like, how do they get to the point where they can really make an impact? Um, I would say the way it happened for me, I had got signed by CAA. I have an agency, so they kind of like booked it for me. But I know it works for, out for different people, honestly. Did you really uh, stage, drive, stage drive off of Enrolling Lot? Yeah, yeah, I stage dive every show. Wait, wait, yeah. do you have a certain form um, the first time I staged off, I was just following somebody. I was following <laughs> Billy, and I fucking jump like this. Like, yeah, now I know how to jump for real. Like, you run, and then you turn, and there then you go. go. Yeah. I kick somebody in the fucking head, for sure. Yeah. I hit a girl in the head. She had braids, and she, she was like, at first she was hurt, then she was like, ah, <laughs> like she was turned. I was like, I'm what? so fucking sorry. Like, I did not mean to kick you in your head. Like, what? I kicked her hard as hell. What comes over you to make you want to jump off of a stage into a crowd of people? I'm an adrenaline junkie. I just went skydiving. So it was just like, yeah. So it was just like, in my mind, I'm like, shit, you feeling all that energy from the crowd? You like, damn, like, y'all really fuck with me. Like, I'm about to jump on y'all niggas. So hold on. <laughs> so are you ever going to get in the pit? Oh, I always get in the pit. I always get in the pit. So Cash be throwing the balls in the pit. I don't throw them hoes in the pit, but I for sure I get in the pit with my security guard and I just tell everybody to back up. Yeah. And then shit, whenever my DJ gets to three, let's fucking mosh. Let's jump. You, you see how they had ASAP Rocky, uh that had him looking all, yeah. all distraught. I don't know what ASAP Rocky situation was. That shit looked crazy as fuck. No. I don't know if he went down there with somebody or if he went by himself. No, somebody said uh Man, somebody was grabbing the shit out of my box. Oh, yeah. Whatever. And when I seen his face, he was like, he was like. <laughs> God, oh, you got him? Oh, you got him? They got I feel me, like, God. in their mind, shit, fans are crazy. Like, I've had fans trying to kiss me, like, oh, on damn. some wild shit. Right. Yeah. Fans are really crazy. What's your leave game like? What's your leave game like? I've kissed a fan before. It depends. Like You got to ask age, for one. If you, if you, if you on some rock star shit, you got to ask age. And then I feel like if you just on some like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, shit, you don't even really got to weave. Yo, security going to muff the fuck out of their ass. For real. What about uh, the throwing the phones on stage? Mm, I fuck with it, but it's just like, I mean, I don't know who phone this yeah, is. So, yeah, so it's just like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm going to pick that hoe up and make a video. But I'm like, damn, like, you got to, like, who phone is this? And they get everybody in the crib, mine, mine. Like, bro, I don't know. So whoever I fucking pass it to, that's on y'all. Like. But they don't be caring. Not for real. Now, uh, we speaking on speaking of you said security and on the things of safety. 
like um you know we had the incident that just happened with takeoff R. P. to him um what are some things that you used to do that you used to enjoy that you feel like now it's like I'm at a certain level where I can't do those things or participate in those type of things, you know, just for your safety. I would say, shit, probably a month ago, it was, it's this 24 hour bowling spot in Plano. Tried to fade with some girls and like one homie. And like, I had all my jewelry on and shit. And when we get there, it's like, it's, some, it's white people walking out, like some golfing ass niggas. And they're like, oh, I like, I like your shirt. And then I'm like, oh, I like, oh, it's gonna be a good time. Yeah. Walk in. Niggas got Pooh Icy mask on and shit. Oh, like, oh, oh fucking bowling and shit. Oh, I'm, like, I'm like, it's up. Yeah, I'm like, oh, this, this is a different vibe. Like, I'm like, I didn't expect this shit. And it's I didn't up. think niggas was gonna be bowling at three in the morning neither. So I'm just like, all right. And I just could not get in the right headspace. And it, what made it so weird is kind of just like leaving and then seeing them posted up by their car. That's you know really the weird stuff, yeah. Yeah, like that's the weird shit. And thank God, like, I gotta can still carry. So, like, good, but also it's just like it's way better to have somebody else that's watching your back so you can enjoy yourself. All lies, because yeah. It, yeah, cause it's like shit, like at the end of the day, like niggas don't care. You know what I'm saying? So it's just Definitely. like you just gotta stay, stay aware. And uh speaking on uh takeoff, um, you know, uh what as far as for you, level of loss is that to the music genre, um, you know, I'm sure. A huge one, Yes, a huge one. Who yeah. wasn't? Trap out the band, though. <laughs> Trap out the band, though. Like, come on, nah, bro. Like, <laughs> come like on, we man. know, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, yeah. I just feel like that situation was really unfortunate and it should have never happened, honestly. Yeah. And he's a true legend and may he rest in paradise, for real, for real. That shit was fucked up. Definitely, Um, what is your favorite city to tour? You said, huh? My bad. What is your favorite city to that you've been on tour? What has been your favorite spot? London. London. Ooh, yeah. the, was the O2 Arena? Was is that O2 Arena in London? No, it was Wireless Festival. Oh, the, oh, yeah. How was that? Like, how was the how do the fans reciprocate in London? Crazy. I don't know. Like, I ain't trying to gas this shit, but like, I swear to God, they made me feel like I was Michael Jackson. <laughs> like, dead Did somebody ass, you like, see somebody faint? At the yeah, like, bro, they were screaming like, bro, dead ass, like. When I was done performing, like, mind you, they were singing word for word. Like, it wasn't just love song. They were singing my songs. I was like, damn, like, this is crazy because it's thousands. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm like, yeah. it's thousands of fucking people singing my shit. Bro, I kid you not. When I started trying to go watch other artists perform, like, I got videos. Just, like, motherfuckers is screaming. Like, Summer Walker's performing on stage and shit. Motherfuckers, ah, ah. I'm, like, looking like, damn, bitch, shut up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm not trying to fuck her set up. And it was just <laughs> wild, bro. They're crazy. And uh, Europeans, I just feel like they show love different to music, for real. No, I bet. I bet. I mean, God damn it, man. Level too lit. So I got to ask you this because, um, you know, there's a lot of people making uh, R&B is dead and all this type of shit. But when I listen to R&B, I feel like it's more alive than ever. Hell like yeah. Like this mad artist. This is probably like 20 people on my phone that people may or may not know, but mm -hmm. they, they killing shit. When you hear things like that, what is, what is your take on it? Because I look at you, you're doing the numbers. You got the well, accolades, you. you got the numbers, and, and, and you hear stuff like that, and it's like, huh? Um, I feel like R&B is different to everybody. You know what I'm saying? I feel like in my mind, like what you said, R&B is not dead. Everybody's making their own world right now. It's just about you actually going to that world and visiting it and listening to their music. You know, like, niggas is not, it's not no more... Luther Vandross, right. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's a, a legend. And there probably is some, but I just haven't heard them. But I just feel like that's the typical, you know, wave that everybody wants people to be on. Like, right. I'm not Jennifer Hudson, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. She has amazing fucking vocals, but also it's like, I'm Cash Page. Right. Allow people to be themselves. Don't try to pe put people in a box because they're not as, you know, they don't have the singing voice as these artists or don't have the same type of vibe. Like, bro, right. we, it's a whole new generation. Right. I think with this new generation of R&B, what's so dope is like, it's so wavy. It's like R&B 2.0 or some shit. Like mm -hmm. even your style is like, you have multitude of different ways, <laughs> different you. voices. And how did you come up with your whole style? You know what uh, I mean? Kind of just like I was saying earlier, like I just grew up playing Guitar Hero. So it's just like playing Guitar Hero, playing video games. I love skater shit. I don't know how to skate, but I love the way they dress. Yeah. And I just, I don't know. I feel like one thing I'd like to do is throw people off. Like, I feel like you meet me, you'll be like, ah, oh, shit, she a rapper. She got chains on, this, this, that. And it's like, you go to one of my shows, you're like, damn, she singing? Or damn, she raging? Or, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you, you can't put me in a box for real. Did you ever play Dance Dance Revolution? Hell yeah. How good were you at Dance Dance Revolution? 
just easy, you know. Uh, what I'm <laughs> <laughs> just real life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Motherfuckers start doing the X, but I'm like, all right, my legs finna fall off now, shit. Um, Twenty One just recently said that uh, Nas dropped a new project, and he said even though that Nas is a legendary artist, that he is not relevant. So I want to know what makes an artist relevant. Like, when do you fall in and out of relevancy, or is there a such thing as that? I think it's a such thing as it. I feel like people call you unrelevant, like irrelevant, whenever they don't see you as much, whenever they don't see your name in the blogs. Like Nas is forever gonna be a legend. Shout out him for sure. Now okay. you see a situation, and you're in the music business, uh -huh. um, and you see a girl go online and she does something like uh, period uh period ah, <sighs> and then next thing you know, after she goes viral, labels are calling to sign her. Yeah. From a label spam standpoint, do you does that make sense to you? As from, from from a label standpoint, I feel like in this day and age, it makes sense because they need viral people. They need. Mm. I mean, a lot of labels try to use TikTok now. You know what I'm saying? It's like we need people that are popping on TikTok. It's not really about music like that anymore. Some labels care about music for real and care about art. So I don't know. I feel like everybody got their own journey for real. It's crazy because when you go into the R&B stratosphere, it's like talent is really a thing. Mm -hmm. And then in the rap world, you could kind of make it by without all talent, you know. Beat gotta be hard as fuck. No, definitely. definitely. When the beat hard, shit, nobody give a fuck about what you saying. They like, shit, that, ho that 808 is knocking. All right, For so real. let's do it like this then, man. Uh, your top five R&B artists of all time. Top five R&B artists of all time. Damn. Oof. Man, it's hard to think about <laughs> right now. I'm gonna keep it a bean. I'm gonna keep it a bean. Give me one, give me one name you'll throw out there. Scissors. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. No, nah, because I love SZA, especially sound. I love SZA now, too. But I'm just saying, like, I got put on her when she was on SoundCloud, like sobriety. Yes. You are when she was working with Chance the Rapper, Baby Long. You know what I'm saying? Kendrick Lamar, like all that. Shit. Oh, yeah. Now, definitely. Child's play. Everybody single by the end when this album drops. <laughs> it's like, God, how, how much even with your music, how much percentage is it your personal life versus just songs you're singing to maybe uplift or, you know, just how mm. much of your personal life do you put into your own music? Probably 90 percent. Sure. So they getting they getting you for real. Yeah, because it's experience. You know what I'm saying? Like I like to make songs about experience. Like I got this one song called Fake Friends. I had this friend that was pillow talking to one of my girls just so she can fuck. Like literally uh -huh. was pillow talking to her, like, yeah, you know, Cash got other girls, you know, but I'm trying to <laughs> Like, bro, took her to my favorite taco spot and shit. Oh, she doing like, oh, some crazy she, she playing shit. the game dirty. Yeah, like playing a dirty, dirty game, bro. And so then shit, like I remember getting the lace up. Motherfuckers laced me up like at 5 o'clock p.m. I remember that shit because I wrote about I literally made a song the next day. 5 o'clock on the dot. She let me know. She put me on three-way with old girl telling her what happened. Song started off 5 o'clock on the dot. I hear my cell phone like, Cash, what's up? What is B on? Like, let me lace you up. You won't believe what I just heard. What'd you hear? What'd you know? Bro, she a hoe. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just gotta, you just gotta make from experience. Sometimes that shit just hit. You know what I'm saying? You just in your feelings about it. Cause my bitch name was Beyonce. That hoe was bad. <laughs> she looks bad. <laughs> It's badder bitches though. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's badder bitches though. Like it's badder what's bitches cash, than her. What's Cash Page's type? Uh Cash Page's type is a genuine soul. I love beautiful girls, but also you can be beautiful. Yeah, because I was gonna say, get that shit out of here. Yeah, genuine like genuine soul. <laughs> no, genuine soul, because who big genuine soul. <laughs> My thing is who wanna be around the lame? Why would nah, I want to kick it with a girl that I can't have no deep conversation with? Unless, it, and it's, it's different vibes. Like, not everything is always serious, but it's just like, shit, if I'm trying to date, like, you got to be able to come home to my mama. Because yeah, right. my mama going to say something for shit show. Now, what is the longest you've entertained a shallow person? Like, I, I Damn. like, fuck, I'm going to do this for a couple of weeks at two, least. Two weeks. <laughs> bro, it was two weeks, bro. I was trying so hard to get this hoe. Like, mind you, like, I don't even really chase, but it was something about her. But she said the lamest shit. She was like, oh, you eat chicken? Oh, I only eat yellowtail. Like, oh, the lamest. Some of the lamest. I was like, what the yeah. fuck? What? And I'm just like, you know what? We can't get yellowtail tonight. Like, I'm tasting this nah, hoe. That sounds like, like a pickup line, though. Like, I don't know. Bro, this hoe, I swear to God, bro, like. <laughs> that sounds like a pickup line. I don't know, man. Okay. Bro, dead ass. 
Bro, I had bought my friend a purse. Mind you, this purse was like, it was a uh, Christian Louis Vuitton purse, probably like a rack or some shit. Mm. She spends 10K on purses mm. or 5K on purses. Send it to her. She, like, she sent me a purse. I was like, I don't know shit about purses. I was like, I only bought one. Telling her that I bought this, the same story I'm telling y'all. She was like, oh, that's basic as fuck. Like, you have to buy, like, the, it was some fucking Raggedy Ann ass Balenciaga purse that was like 10 bands. And I'm just like, bitch, like, you telling me this, but you just told me yesterday, you, you don't got no AC in your fucking house. Like, like you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you worried about a fucking 10K bag and you and your pit bulls at your fucking house is hot. Right. See, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, see, like over here in real life, we like to low ball. So mm -hmm. we don't want you to have, have had nothing. We want you to feel like Red Lobster was that, that good time. What'd you no, say? No, real was? shit though. <laughs> Shorty need to be able to go to Rudy's or Fuel City or City View, whatever. She need to be able to, because if you can't do that, we ain't never even gonna make it to no fucking Perry Steakhouse or no fucking, you know what I'm saying? We're not making it, it's none of that. But have you ever taken a girl to some bullshit and she was just too excited? You were like, all right, this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. This bitch ain't got no. <laughs> God damn. You ain't never damn. had the cheddar biscuits? You tripped out. Damn, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, don't know. Wait. I can't even think on that one. So I want you to take, uh, Halle Bailey is about to do The Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. You feel like she's gonna kill that role? Hell yeah. I feel yeah. like she's an amazing actress. Yes. Um, do you feel like there will be any backlash for just them trying to switch up the Little Mermaid so much? It's always going to be backlash when you're black. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Have you seen Black Panther yet? Um, I have not seen Black Panther. And I know no. people are going to. They're going to they're gonna get on my ass. I haven't I'm not, seen it yet. I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to do this. <laughs> We're doing it. My my bros, my compadres <laughs> right here, they don't. they feel like the movie wasn't good because... There was no strong black male, said, black male lead, and, and I said, and I said, but there's a strong black woman in the movie, representing for black people, and they was like, the movie sucked. Damn. In my defense, I think all Marvel movies suck. Nah. That's my defense. That's my defense. Yeah, nah. Now hold on, hold on. <laughs> Don't fuck with superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if a nigga ain't getting whacked in the first 10 minutes. <laughs> a cash page movie, you doing all your own stunts? Yeah, probably. It just depends on how crazy planes. they are. I'll jump out of planes. Nothing with water, though. No more water. Have they approached you about doing any movie roles as of yet? Um, I would say it was more so like shows. I remember right. CAA sent me some shit for power. You put a wax on. You put a wax on on camera. Oh yeah, they shit! Sent me shit for power. I just got sent, sent some shit last week to read uh, for Nickelodeon. Um, oh, that's wild. That's dope. Yeah, they sent a lot of great things. Honestly, what the fuck happened to Nickelodeon? Shit, like the slime. <laughs> I remember that shit. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I don't know. I feel like I heard weird shit about the Dan Schneider person or whatever about Dan me. Schneider's Nickelodeon. Yeah, the nigga from Washington. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I heard I heard horrible <laughs> shit. I heard really horrible shit for real for real. I heard that like it was like out of there. He was making pe a kids feel uncomfortable. Oh wow. Hell yeah. So I feel like that's what made it like go downhill for real. That's crazy. But like, I don't know how it is now. I don't think he with them anymore. I think that nigga probably failing in life probably yeah. shit. I'm a power fan. What what role would you want to play in power? Man, if I was playing if I was in power, I most definitely would want to play the role of being like, like Tariq gotta come to me. Like, oh, shit. yeah, like <laughs> you, I'm you like I'm on niece. I'm I'm her niece that just came out the city, like came into town, and yeah. and I'm running shit in New York for it. Oh, so I need, I need I need I need the the plays to come to me. I'm the big dog. It do, I want that. It does seem like Fifty has that tie in with the artist to the movie type yeah, of industry. Yeah. What 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 do you say he's done for TV as far as for artists? Because now you're starting to see artists transitioning the roles. That are on TV, Jeremiah just played a he's role. He's done a lot. That nigga got shot how many times? Like, nah, that, for, you know what for I'm saying? like he's invincible. Like, I don't think he can do anything in the fucking world. Like, <laughs> for, for real, that's Mister Mister Impossible. Like, that nigga is crazy. Now, for the upcoming artist who is debating on signing to a label or staying independent, mm -hmm. um, you have inside knowledge of what advice would you give them as far as being independent, staying independent, mm -hmm. and also the benefits of having a label's push. 
Hmm. I would say both are great at the end of the day because I feel like independent, nobody really in your pockets like that. You know what I'm saying? Talk to and them. then sometimes it's a distribution deal where it's kind of like you're still independent, but you still have people major push. And then I feel as if for a major label, they just going to back in. And it's not like it's free money or nothing like that, but you got budgets. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, shit, you at a major label. It's, it's, a, it's a great thing. I feel like making music is a great thing. And real quick, I want you to give a chance to shout out your jeweler. Cause uh, Giz God, God, you know, came in with <laughs> Bill for Infinity Links. God damn it! Oh, 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 it's active. Oh, it's yeah. active. Yeah, now, nah, now you definitely got shot at Jeweler now. God damn, you got shout out to Poro. I don't know. I got the Def Jam and them gifted me this shit for my birthday. Oh my god! <laughs> shout out Def Jam for the gifts. I got gifted this for my birthday too. Some wealthy ass white lady. I don't even know who the fuck she is. My security guard was just like, "Ah, oh, she want me to give this to you for your birthday." Um, oh, Johnny, oh. I got this from some, like Johnny Dang's company in Houston. Oh, yeah, I, it wasn't that. Johnny Dang personally. It was somebody that was over there. Um, I got gifted this chain and then shit, Blue Moon. Oh, yeah. And then I had my TD Jewelers chain, which was my cash pendant, but that hoe broke. <laughs> Nigga, you came, you came in shot. <laughs> you came in shot. <laughs> no, thank you. Now, I ain't gonna lie, you have a show that is in Dallas in a couple of days that is sold the fuck out. Yeah. How does that I like feel? The emphasis on yeah, that. sold the fuck out. out. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you, hey, you got hey. I think a scalper tried to sell me three tickets when I walked in. I'm like, nigga. <laughs> I'm like, listen. How, how does that feel to just be able to like have a sellout show with like just that cold fan base Shit. that really be rocking? This is exciting because it's my first headline show ever. There you go. That's hard. Yeah, I've never had my. I never had a headline show in Dallas. So it's my first time. So I'm excited. Bring it back. How does, it, yeah. how does it feel for like your friends and family to use your name to get women? Because you know they like. For real. No, it's yeah, real you know shit though. Cousin, I had right? a cousin. I had a cousin that literally like it was a fan like that had hella merch, hella shoes and shit. And they were reaching out to him to get to me. He was making this shit go to his address. Like telling him like, yeah, she wear larges and shit. She like baggy clothes. Like they sending me screenshots. I'm like, damn, you fucked up, nigga. Like that was a hard ass shirt. Like I Send wanted that, that whole low key. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I was just like, man. But like all that shit is it, it's karma at the end of the day. Because no, it's like, no. if you're going to use my name for clout, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like use it. If you want to use, use my name for clout, use it for a good reason. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm make saying? It, like, make it make it work. Make it work for you. Yeah, like <laughs> like my little cousin. My little cousin would be like, man, you know my cousin cash pay. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I don't care about that shit. But I feel like trying to like get shit out of people and per, like promise them dreams. Like nah, that's fucked up. Like what what's the most you spent trying to get clean? Like get get fitted. What you mean? Like get like, like an outfit? Like hmm. like I gotta get clean? Like man, three thousand dollars. What was, what, what was it? What was it? It is so crazy. I don't even know the fucking name. It's, I have a picture of it, but it was to um, the Rock Nation party. It was uh, a 4040 yeah. event. Yeah. And I remember shit. I had got an invite in the mail from the shit. It was like, Jay Z invites you. To four. I was like, damn. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm about to get dressed the fuck up. Like, spent $800 on a fucking Louis Vuitton perfume with my name encrusted in that hoe. Like, I was just trying to go all the fuck out and shit. Like, Got a few pictures, mm -hmm. but do you know where that shit is today? What the, uh, the fit? Do I know what it is or where? No, it where is? it is. Oh shit, it's in my closet. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I still got that. Yeah, th it's gonna still get war. <laughs> now, how has that been with the Rock Nation? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Jay, uh, just everyone over there. Mm -hmm. How has that plug been for you, man? Just to get invited to that family. I feel like it was really exciting because at the time, like, and shout out to Daniel. Shit, he brought me on the team, like, uh, to, to, yeah, two years ago. Um, He's, you know, he's literally top dog, you know? So I just yep. feel like just being over there, it was just really exciting. And they knew how to th throw parties and knew how to like really, you know? Yeah, really celebrate. Yeah, that? Se that. for sure celebrate like a motherfucker. And it's kind of just like, if you say you're a Rock Nation, motherfuckers is like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, they yeah. going crazy off that hoe. Have, so, yeah. you, have you actually had the chance to write for other artists and things like that? Um, nah. I actually haven't. I feel like I was like in a camp and then right. it didn't like, you know what I'm saying? Like it didn't fall through or some shit. But I think I was trying too hard on the record anyways. I think I was making a record for like Cardi B or some shit. And I just was not hitting that hoe. <laughs> for real. Do you see yourself letting somebody write for you? Um, hell yeah. Because the thing is, the biggest people have records written by anybody. And it's like collabs. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you collaborating with somebody and everybody, you know? 
has their own artsy ways that you need to have involved in your own shit. So, hmm. man, it's crazy because uh, you know we had um, Asian Doll in here uh, prior to her fame and her rise, and uh, we asked her back then, "What did she see herself in five years?" And sure enough, she was able to attain those goals, and you know everything kind of planned out. You've already made it, and you're only 21. No, oh, thank you. So I'm curious, what do, where do Cass Page see herself in five years? Man, five years. I'm going to be 26, turning 27. Um, damn. When I'm 27, I I see myself kind of really just like, cause I don't want to do music for that long. Like I really want to like travel the world with it, but I want to be. I'm always gonna be a part of the music industry, but like shit, I want to. I was something. I want to own UMG. I want to own all the licenses to every artist that ever put there out music. There you go. Oh, she's talking business. And, yeah, and I want to like have my own theme park so I can put their music throughout my theme park and they get paid. Bro, she said her own theme park with her music playing through that month. Hell yeah! <laughs> Damn, <laughs> Wally World. That's what I'm saying. Who wouldn't <laughs> want to get on a roller coaster and hear Future or hear whatever? You know? What I'm no, saying? that's lit. <laughs> every Hell ride yeah. plays plays a track from my album. Hell yeah! That's lit. I can see you retiring like three or four times throughout your career. Thank you. <laughs> keep coming back, keep coming back. Hell yeah, I'm like, shit, let me just drop one more yeah, for y'all. Hell yeah. yeah. Before we get out of here, the cash page talked to a female wearing black forces. <laughs> she on that bullshit. <laughs> it, what she look like? She bad, but. She, might, she, might, hey, she hey. clean up well. She clean up well? Yeah. What hey, her nah, house but, look like? But, Oh, yeah. Well, that, no, that, that's the yeah. big question. That's the big no, no, no way. See, with some pit bulls. <laughs> <laughs> Two pits. Yeah. Blue <laughs> nose. Stay the fuck away. <laughs> Stay the fuck away. <laughs> no, I feel Man. like shit. I wouldn't really give a fuck. It just depends. Like she clean up well, and her house not dirty and stuff. Shit, nigga, fuck. She must have got dressed in the dark and threw them hoes on. <laughs> For sure. Shit, that's what I did. I threw on these fucking forces. Shit, I was like. <laughs> Man, give them the name of that project again. Man, S Two M L, aka Soundtrack to My Life. Coming out November 18th. 18th. You know what I'm saying? We're going to fuck crazy and then trees this Sunday. And also, Me Versus Myself tour starting January 27th. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Thought to be crazy. You already know it. You got any shout outs? Um, shout out to y'all. You know what I'm hey. saying? Uh, <laughs> We've been waiting for this one. We've been waiting for this one. Nah, thank y'all for having me. I've seen, I've, like, I've seen a lot of y'all interviews and stuff. I just didn't know I would be one of the people. Yeah. How you didn't know? Man, we've been, we've been, we've been trying to smoke you out. Hey, it was, it's about to happen. Look, off camera, that's happening. Yeah. But, uh. Little, little Michelle Obama, little Obama. <laughs> now, uh, you know, we love everything that you're doing, the projects, the headlining, the tours. We know you're destined for greatness. Well, you're already great, but much more greatness to come. No, thank you to all of us, man. Yeah. To all of us. Thank you. Hey, and it's the best part. You are a real life street star. Hey. hey. Uh, Shout out real life street stars, nigga. Moving. Hey.